Hey everybody, so today I wanted to talk about something that someone in here had emailed me when they got to speak to an Apple engineer that came to their university on campus. I'm not going to give out the name for obvious reasons, but it was pretty interesting. So in some previous videos, I've been discussing things like where ba Apple is tying the battery to the phone via serialization. There are also controversies regarding True Tone, where they tie the screen to the phone with serialization. And this email comes from someone that was seeking to offer an explanation for this practice that Apple had. It said, Hi, Lewis. A couple months ago, an Apple engineer came by my university to recruit for some engineering interns. After the presentation, I waited around to ask them questions about repair. I commended them for their genuine parts program. I asked about why they were locking batteries and screens to phones, and they told me that the reason was because some people would buy iPhones, dismantle them for the first-party screens and batteries, replace them with cheaper third-party screens and batteries, return the modified phones to where they bought them from, and then sell the first-party screens and batteries. Apparently, these phones would be resold, and regular customers would get these part swap phones, which is part of the reason why iPhone batteries and screens were being locked to the phones. So the TLDR of that is that scammers would go to the Apple Store, buy a phone, replace the screen and the battery in the phone with a knockoff one, return it, and then Apple would resell that phone to an unsuspecting customer who would then receive knockoff junk in their phone, and they were, wouldn't be aware of it. So what this would do is it would make them aware of it. So the moment you take the phone out of the box, it's going to give you a little warning that says, this is not a good battery, this is not a good screen, so at least you go back to the store and you demand satisfaction immediately rather than six months or ten months down the line realizing this battery ain't as good or this, why, this doesn't feel like my friend's iPhone. iPhones suck. Or maybe even not realizing that your screen is not the one that Apple gave you but some junk from a bad knockoff screen vendor because there are good knockoff screen vendors and very bad knockoff screen vendors. Quality does vary and obviously if a scammer is doing this operation with the sole intention of getting the Apple screen from that phone, their profit margin is going to depend on how much money they put into the scam. So if I'm buying an iPhone 10 from Apple, I'm not going to buy the you know nice $150 knockoff screen to put in there to when I return it. I'm going to buy the cheapest piece of crap that fits in there that allows the person behind the, the register to believe that this is actually the iPhone 10 that they sold me. The cheapest thing possible. And this is an area where I actually do kind of understand and feel bad for Apple a little bit because I've had this problem myself with my own business. So one of the things that I talked about in this video that I did six and a half years ago on eBay and Amazon is that people would buy a laptop screen. Let's say they needed a fluorescent backlit. Let's just take something like the Acer 5517. So the Acer 5517 was one of those transitionary period laptops when they were switching over from fluorescent back backlit screens to LED backlit screens. So at the time, Acer was switching over from fluorescent backlit screens to LED backlit screens. And there are certain models of their laptops where you could buy the same laptop at two different times in the year, and you could get either a fluorescent one or an LED one. Now, most websites would say, don't order the screen for your laptop, buy the model of your laptop. Don't do that. Open it up and order your screen number based on the model number of the screen in your machine. Most people don't want to do this. They don't want to take apart their laptop until they've already got the new screen, so they would buy the wrong one. Now, since the fluorescent one cost about $120 at the time, and the LED backlit one cost $50, most people would just arrange by lowest price and just buy the LED backlit one, and it would be wrong. And I show you pictures of where somebody was actually folding this thing over, cutting up the PC board and all this junk to try to make the LED backlit screen fit in their fluorescent one, and then return it. Now, this was not intentional fraud. This was simply stupidity, and then they would return it after destroying it. They weren't actually intending to defraud me. They were just dumb. But this is something that I'm sympathetic to because I've been on the other end of this as well with eBay and Amazon where somebody will buy, let's say, an LP133WX3 TLA5, which is clearly intended for an Apple computer, and then they would send me back a part that has a sticker on it with an HP spare number, a scratch screen with fingerprints. It's very, very obvious to me at that point that you scanned me because you bought an Apple screen for me, not an Apple, a screen for an Apple computer from LG for me, and then you would send me back a screen that has an HP part sticker. This isn't even a question of like whether you scratched up the thing I sent you. You sent me back something that was not even what I sent you. And Amazon and eBay, 110% of the time, would side with the customer, and they would also add a demerit to my account every time this happened, which is why I got banned from selling on Amazon in 2012. I was getting scam left and right, which is why I don't sell anything on Amazon. Now, the thing is, I realize this happens, and I've also met people, unfortunately, in this industry that have bragged about the fact that they can 
can do this. And I've scolded them. I've sat them down and said, listen, you, you cannot like Apple, but there's a way to go about things. And there's a way of just being a piece of sh where they would brag that they would actually travel around the country, go to Apple stores, buy a device, put knock off motherboards and junk like this little pieces of plastic back in there and then return them, get their full money back and then sell those parts online. I really do have a level of sympathy for Apple for the fact that they have this issue. I understand and I sympathize with anybody dealing with this kind of scammy crap in either e-commerce or retail because I have dealt with that even as a small vendor and it seriously does hurt, especially when most credit cards, most chargeback systems, everything, they, they, they side with the customer regardless. So you, you just kind of have to eat it as cost of doing business. I understand what they're doing here in a sense. Their thinking is, listen, we're going to get scammed when people return this. It's just going to happen. But at the very least, when we resell that device to another customer, at least they'll know when they get it that something's up and return it to us so they won't think that that's the normal experience experience that you should be having with an iPhone. And I can sympathize with them there. In addition to ensuring that a customer is going to be informed when they get an iPhone from the Apple store that has a screen that some other jackass returned in it, there's also their idea that they probably are going to be reducing demands for this scam as a whole. So this scam has a risk to reward. I'm going to defraud the store with retail or warranty fraud, which is something that's prosecutable. But in exchange, I'm getting parts that may be worth $50 to $200 on the market. So that is a good risk to reward. Whereas if they serialize it and those parts that I stole are now worthless because they only work with that specific phone, now what they've done is they've changed the incentive structure so there's a whole lot of risk and no reward. I imagine what Apple's thinking is that if they change the incentive structure so that there's so all this risk and no reward, maybe people will stop scamming them, which is a reasonable way to think, even if that's not how it works out in reality because you have people on YouTube showing you guides on how to reprogram the serial number of your phone, which I'm sure they're already doing if they're a scammer right now. So I don't even think that it's worked to that extent, but I could at least understand where in their head where they're going with this because there are normal people People that are buying normal screens that are not originals that are having to hack them just to get true tone back. I get where Apple's coming from where they think that they're going to change the risk reward incentive structure but at the same time this also doesn't seem to be the way it's going to play out in reality. It just means the scammers are just going to have to teach people and get repair shops used to reprogramming it. Further, I don't actually believe that this is the way independents were getting their parts to begin with. The demand for, for parts for independent repair shops around the world is going to be like this. And the amount of parts that you can get through this warranty scamming thing is like this. I mean, think about it. You have to buy the iPhone. You need to wait in line, buy your iPhone, return it to a store, or mail it back each time you want one part. There are many repair shops that I know of that are buying 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 iPhone screens. And then you have just the size, your size and scope of this industry and business in general, I don't believe that this was something that was happening to, uh, to the scale of where you were supplying repair shops with 10,000 parts a month just off of return scams. Because this is something that I, it, it's just, there is a bottleneck here based on the amount of time and human effort that would have to go into getting each individual battery and each individual screen that I don't think is is sustainable. On the other hand, you do have to wonder why this is such a problem for Apple and not for other vendors. How many other vendors do you know of that are doing this type of serialization thing? And then you also have to look at how Apple deals with parts in general. I liken this to what happens w with drugs. You know, you'll have people that want to buy weed, but they can't buy weed because you know, it's, it's not legal to sell weed. So people will come into existence that then sell weed. And then they may, they, sometimes they may do illegal things in, in, you know, in order to sell it. Not all drug dealers, but some drug dealers may get aggravated, territorial disputes, this, that, and the other. And then there is crime. And then when crime occurs, then you have people that get arrested, go to prison, there's violence, ruining of lives, all this other stuff. And I'm not saying that the, the, the disputes, the violence, any of that stuff is okay. I'm not. All many people are saying when it comes to the drug side is that if you could walk down a Whole Foods or Dwayne Reed or pharmacy and just buy some marijuana, you may notice a reduction in drug-related crime once it is legal. And one area where I am not sympathetic to Apple, even though I am trying to understand their point of view here, is maybe, just maybe, there would be less demand for people to walk into your store and commit return and warranty fraud on the regular if you were actually releasing parts 
to third parties and people that needed them to buy them. The reason that I don't have the full extent of sympathy, even though I do have some sympathy as somebody who's dealt with this exact same situation in e-commerce before, let's just say what I'm talking about with the ISL 9240. You have a machine that costs $3,000 that ha often has this chip that should in any standard market cost five to 10 bucks max fail. When that chip happens to fail, the only option at that point is to go to Apple and pay $1,500 to have the board fixed, or I need to dig through Apple charging cases that cost $129 and desolder an underfilled ISL 9240, reball it and put it on the board, simply because you told Renaissance and Intersil don't sell to these people. It's not because Renaissance and Intersil don't want to sell to me. You told them that this is our intellectual property and we don't want you to sell it to anybody, when the only intellectual property involved there is the fact that you were dicks enough to say, oh yeah, let's just change this like one little address in the charge register so it doesn't work with any other machine. So you've created a problem, which is scarcity of something that many people want and many people need and unlike in the drug trade where we could say well this has this can harm your health or this can be addictive or whatever the hell else people want to say this 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 doesn't do any of that it, it's, it's it's a charge chip it's a screen for a phone you created an artificial scarcity for something that has no reason to be artificially scarce so you are creating an incentive a very high incentive for people to do this now i'm not saying it's right I'm not saying it's right that people walk into an Apple store, return a phone after buying it with parts in it that were in Apple's so that they can keep the Apple screen and battery and so on and so forth. That That is morally and ethically repugnant and wrong. It's disgusting. But at the same time, would that be happening as much if people were simply able to buy it. Of course there's always going to be warranty scammers and of course there's always going to be return scammers. But when you look at other companies that actually make these parts available to their customers, they don't seem to have these problems because they're not chasing this whole serialization nonsense. If the parts were available, you would cut down on the demand. And once you cut down on the demand for it, you cut down on the amount of money that could be made by doing these scams. And when you cut down on the amount of financial reward that there is for doing a scam, you're going to cut down on the amount of people that are actively engaged with that scam. Several of you in my comment section have been saying, why don't people just en masse buy iPhone XR battery cases, rip the ISL 9240 out, put an ISL 9239 in its place and then return it, file a chargeback. What if a million of your subscribers did that? It's funny. Honestly, it did make me laugh and it made me chuckle. But the point behind this is I was thinking to myself, I'm surprised nobody's done it. It's a fucked up thing to do. It really is. But I'm surprised just the fact that there are billions of people in this world and quite a few of them are immoral when it comes to making money that somebody hasn't done it. Because the thing is, there's an actual incentive to do it. It's fucked up to say, but when you say that this $3,000 device is that it now needs to be fixed at one option of $1,500 and destruction of the user data, when that's the only option made available, because Apple have been dicks, it does actually create an incentive plan for people to do this type of immoral or unethical behavior because there is some serious money to be made from it. Again, this chip should be sold for $5. The cheapest way to get it is this high labor 129 thing. This, you see what I'm talking about here. It's it, Now let's say Apple realizes that this is an actual problem. They realize that people are en masse purchasing this product, returning it modified, and getting their money back so that they can get this chip. There's two ways you could go about trying to fix this problem. Behind door number one, you could actually serialize the ISL 9240. You could say, it seems like this chip that we don't want to sell to anybody else because we're dicks, people are doing this to get to it. So what we could do is we could be even more dicks and serialize the chip to that specific MacBook, to that specific chart case so that this chip is worthless if they go to steal it and try to get rid of the scams that way. Or you could try to get rid of it on the back end, which is how about we just get rid of the artificial scarcity to begin with? Do you think people would actually go about these scams? Do you think that they would actually put time, money, effort, and risk into these scams if there were methods in place to simply obtain what there is clearly a market demand for? Of course not. If I could go to digikey.com and I could buy an ISL 9240 for 5 to $15, do you think that in anybody's rational minds, they would bother wasting the time to buy this thing, to rip it open, to remove an underfilled chip, reball it, close it up, make sure it looks perfect, go back to the store and physically return it in person? No way in hell. And in my opinion, the same thing is true when it comes to the iPhone screens and the batteries. The only reason you have this to begin with is because you've had this artificial scarcity created by the company by their decisions that they made on their own. Now, granted, people doing that would be 
morally and ethically in the wrong to buy that battery case, return that battery case with something else inside of it. Because that, that's just, again, it, it's, it's wrong. A, you're returning it saying it's unused or not working when you're the one who made it not working and you used it. But you understand where the incentive comes from. And I can't help but wonder to myself, would Apple be in the situation where there are so many scammers coming to their store if this was, wasn't the case? So you have an issue with part supply. So people have come up with a scam to try to create part supply. They've created that scam to try to get part supply. And now because the scam has existed, now we need to tighten our supply chain even further, which means we have to make it so that there's no parts leaks whatsoever. So it's even harder to get parts. So now what are you going to have? You're just going to have an even greater demand to get OEM parts, which means more people scamming you. And it's this vicious circle, this vicious cycle. And it's, if anything, if we've learned anything from the drug war over the past 50 years, whether it is with um, low level stuff like marijuana or the higher level drugs that genuinely ruin lives, if there's anything that I think we've, we should have taken away from the past 50 years, it's that this doesn't work. Yet for some reason, Apple seems to be instituting it with their own supply chain. I'm genuinely curious, what is it that you think when it comes to this issue? Do you have sympathy for the fact that there are people en masse scamming Apple in this way by buying iPhones, purposely stuffing them with fake parts, returning them for a full refund, and then selling the parts in the gray market? Or are you sympathetic to the repair shops and the others who are unable to get parts and understanding of why this occurred and of the idea that if Apple didn't have this dickish control over their supply chain to where they would tell people like Intercell and Renaissance, don't sell things that are important to anybody but us, even if they needed to fix stuff, that they wouldn't have this problem to begin with? Or are you, sim or are you sympathetic to both sides of the argument? I'm kind of curious. I'm a little sympathetic to both sides of the argument because on one hand, I think it's wrong what's happening. But on the other hand, I see how Apple has kind of put themselves in a situation where they have created a, where they have created a problem and now they're creating a solution that makes it even worse. And uh, I'm, I am kind of curious to hear what it is you all think on this type of issue.